it's a, it's a different lifestyle when you're cold and the sun goes down five o'clock, five thirty, and you have to be in bed in order to not be frozen. You're still cold, but you're not frozen while you're in bed, and it gets long and 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 boring, you know, over uh, what is it? It's about fourteen hours. You have to stay there. And did, did, didn't you have a, a wood burning furnace or something in your main room? Yeah, I, I have a, a wood burning stove which is outside on the, the balcony, but with no uh, hydro and no water, I can't take a chance of uh, anything, uh, whether it be the furnace in the basement or. I have a wood-burning furnace in the basement. I have a wood-burning stove on the ground floor. But one spark, and they happen occasionally when you have those things that you open the door and it shoots out, it could burn the house down in 20 minutes. So can't use anything that has a flame on it in the house. Wow, yeah. You've been tempted a couple times, I'm sure, because it gets cold. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it's it's um, it's not uh, the end of the world, you know. I'm not complaining to the point where I, I would choose not to do it. I, I think I'm doing this because... I've been asked to, and that it makes sense to me that I can't give in to what they're trying to do. Uh, I have a lot of uh, uh, questions about their reasoning, you know, what I've done to politicians over the years. Um, There's a lot of reasons that they may use, but I don't know which one they're using at this stage. I suspect, however, that it's because I got into the topic of uh, electromagnetism Mm -hmm. and its effect on the thermometers, how an electromagnetic field replaces temperature on a thermometer and and tells you you're walking around in a um, middle of a cloud of electromagnetism and your body is in fact operated on electromagnetism thousands and millions of little genetic switches that turn things on and off. And, of course, if you go from no field of electromagnetism to a large field of electromagnetism on and off, it affects the the switches in your body and causes things like hernia, and strokes, and heart attacks, and uh, cancer-related blisters on your feet. Uh, and and I've seen some of that, you know, in the, with the hernia and the feet uh, and the fingertips uh, that uh, confirms that there's a major problem for hydro when they are pushing a uh, concept of self-driving cars that are going to be recharged on the road by a hydro line cable underground. Mm. And, 
And the minute you turn that on, it may charge the vehicle, which is intended to do. But what does it do to the people in the car? Yeah. One ride won't kill you, but you may not live as long as you would normally if you ride an electric vehicle fed from below ground all day long. You know what that means in money to hydro is trillions of dollars. So. Hey, you think that um, you know everyone's always if the what do they call this this green the the green deal that they're trying to press now? Yeah. You know, so yeah, but if the roads were, I mean, the only the only benefit I think to having some kind of roads like that would be if they could heat them and there was no more like snow would melt instantly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, but yeah, obviously the downside of everything going electric and then even just powering that, I'm sure, is not going to be cheap. You know, you have hydro up there, but we don't have that down here. If we did it, you know, it, it would still be just as much energy. <laughs> yeah. Least. They don't care about waste if they can charge for it. And that's what they do by sending me a bill for $19,000. Did anything ever happen with the, someone supposed to look into that to put that 10% on or whatever it was, or 15% back on? Nobody has succeeded in doing anything against hydro. And Hydro uh, placed a call, uh, and I got Jennifer to call them back. And the first thing they said is, uh, are you calling to tell us you're going to start making payments on your bill? So, So obviously, nobody at Hydro is changing anybody's approach to this place. The only thing they don't want to do is go to court. I guess they haven't found the judge that they could handle Mm -hmm. in this case because of the fact that we're the Canadian Institute for Political Integrity. (laughs) The, The judges suspect there's something going on. Yeah, that's a shame. I don't know. I wish there was something we could do, even if it's it's not it it's not or, anything that we can do. It something that has to be done to them uh, in order to shake them out of their doldrums and and bring them some kind of reality. And only creation can handle that because God loves what they're doing. God is war, pestilence, famine, and disease. So imagine how God loves electromagnetism. But God's boss is creation, and creation has to take care of it. Yeah. So maybe you can remember in a talk or two ago, um, we were mentioning about how Mother Superior was kind of penetrating. God. (laughs) Yeah. Right. Was was penetrating and sending people into, I guess, purgatory, right? Yeah. Well, the last. Uh, that I've heard among the discussions that are going on is that uh, paradise had to be cleansed 
that Mother Superior has allowed the entry into paradise of most of the nuns that have ever lived. And nuns are about the worst uh, in the human creators of uh, illness and death and aggravation on on children and on the poor, all under the guise of being uh, there to help and educate. And all they do is create havoc amongst the people they deal with so that they can end up being the biggest investor on Wall Street. So creation is, uh, from what I understand, has been now for a year or two in the process of going through paradise looking for souls, electromagnetic former living people who were nuns, and evicting them uh, so that when the next batch, the one that is uh, under the control of creation rather than Mother Superior or God, uh, the next batch won't have to live with those people for eternity. And and from what I understand, millions of people have been evicted either because of what they did when they were nuns mostly, but also brothers and and priests. So how how would they other than say, like, if, if, for example, if the cell has only made themselves known to you at this point in time, so how would like they know how the whole system works on the other side? Like, who like who let them become aware so they even knew that they could have that option to try to stuff it full of their people? <laughs> and, or yeah. for, from what I understand, and you, you got to remember, it's it's things I'm being told, obviously I have it in my memory but don't remember it because the switch for that part hasn't been turned on. Mm -hmm. But from what I understand in in discussions, mostly not my discussion but overhearing discussions by the cell, is that there is that halfway point called purgatory where people uh, go and wait until they can get into paradise. And that uh, consists at this time of about seven and a half billion people. In there... Um, whatever way they did it, they don't explain it, but they were handpicked out of the lineup um, as people who could, in fact, investigate this part of the world uh, because it has a special significance in what has occurred, what is occurring, and what will occur in the future. And 26 people, uh, men all, were chosen, and they have added Jennifer as the first female, 27th person, although they haven't told her yet, they just appointed her uh, because I then would be put in contact with her. And the job they were asked to do 
was to investigate more than anything else that they have to do is investigate what they call cosmetic Christians. Hmm. People who say they belong to a Christian or Catholic church um, and, and go to ceremonies um, and say one thing while their actions prove differently. They are Christians in values for cosmetic reasons in order to take a place of importance in the societies that have existed over the last few hundred years and basically are used by most governments um, who add to their conferences always little additions to their speeches with the help of God, or so God be it. When, when in fact, what they're talking about is any help that can be given to the nuns to gain more power and influence and money. The U.S. Uh, has in its uh, constitution a uh, relationship with God. So does the Canadian government you know mm-hmm. so since these investigators have to know how the system works they were chosen from these areas southern ontario southern quebec maritimes and the border states in the U.S. from the Atlantic Ocean to the Mississippi River. And these people uh, are identifying sources of the problem so that if there is to be a change in the way we live our lives, It will begin by uh, something like Egypt's 10 plagues where uh, creation will not interfere with God's war, pestilence, famine, and disease, including cataclysmic events so that there will be a cleansing on earth of a whole bunch of people like Hydro and Bell Canada and um, Canadian Revenue Agency, Canadian Border uh, Agencies, uh, all of the ones who pretend that they're there for the help of people but In fact, it has nothing to do with helping people, but helping the bureaucracy get bigger and stronger and and more detached from the people. Um, And, and of course, run, run the world. They're basically running the world by stealing money from the countries and sending it to the UN so the bureaucrats at the UN end up running the world. Now, in the meantime, 
the place which they call the fifth dimension, which refers, I guess, to what religious people describe as paradise, is infested with these people that have, in fact, betrayed their trust over the centuries and are now at at one of the highest levels of control with the UN uh, in play here and the bureaucratic government departments that exist and the bureaucrats in corporations like General Motors and Ford and all of these organizations that rule uh, politicians and and do it because they're told to do it and because there's a pension at the end and and a salary when they retire that kind of stuff Mm -hmm. Uh, so that's the system that is being changed now Creation is cleaning the system where the people are uh, no longer living and the cell is examining the people who are causing the problem, who are currently living and their children who will live and become bureaucrats in the future. So it's a combination of all of those things that should bring us to a place where people will, for one reason or another, grasp what I'm talking about. And that will be called Clear View 2020. Oh. Well, you know, just so you know, there's a kind of a, a expressway that runs north and south called the Clearview Expressway that that goes into Flushing, New York. Oh, oh I didn't know that. Yep. Yep. Right there. So. No, when you go to the the optometrist and he gives you glasses, he says you will see 2020. Yeah, that's the same thing as the year 2020. And in both, you see clearly. One is eyesight and the other one is a mental grasp of what has gone on. Yep. And it's prevalent now. You're, you know, I think yeah. it's different. You know, it's almost like when, you know, like, say for example, if I tell my son something that is beyond his years, he can yeah. hear me, but he can't totally grasp the wisdom of what I'm saying because he hasn't lived through it. Right. So he yeah. can hear what I say, or, you know, or if you take, you hear a lot of times that people travel, you know, abroad when they're 11, 12 years old, but they don't remember it because they weren't old enough to remember or, or appreciate yeah. it. So even though people might be learning the truth or, or being able to see clearly, they don't really know what's, what they're looking at because they haven't, they don't know where, they don't have the context. You know, it it comes down to the switch hasn't opened yet. You know, mm-hmm. it's like walking into a room and it's dark. If you flip the switch, it becomes light, and then you start to understand. Well, most of the people educated today uh, by the systems in the West, whether they be political, religious corporate or university, most of those people, their switches to understanding anything other than their task are 
shut off. And only with the help of creation can there be an instant awakening, which is basically flipping switches. You know, people don't really grasp the concept that we have an electromagnetic system that controls the body's operations, and that's millions and millions of switches for the finest detail of this must be on so that this can do that and that can do this and this can do that. And we only see the, the end result, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Is well, a person mm-hmm. nasty or is a person uh, good, you know, whatever sense you want to apply, uh, is the end product, but the road to that end product is the turning on of switches. Yeah, or off of other turning switches off too. So is that like uh, like you know? Um, so Jared and I spend time talking to you know people kind of that reach out to us, or we have kind of made contact with to discuss. Um, who have found your work and especially in these days where you're not as accessible or you don't make the post that you used to to the situations like so we kind of are the uh, the ones responsible I guess for helping them get their voice heard or their question the message out right yeah. so is there something so well, I was like a lot of them have some of us have gone through the same path of like getting these switches turned on or in, in, like you said before, like they were probably never fully turned off to begin with. It's just, you needed the right set of circumstances to see that. And also being this time in, uh, I don't want to say history <laughs> existence that we have access to a lot of this information or, or we can, you know, we're instantly sharing stuff and hearing things and not always having to, you know, like the older methods of we could be different continents learning the same thing but never meet each other. Now we can instantly talk to each other and, and, and kind of share these things. And um, so your message is out there and hitting people and resonating with them. And, uh, and everyone does kind of come at it from a different way. So I wonder if this is still us gathering that 13 that we talked about years ago and, uh, is there anything that does does the cell mention anything about like what we're doing or us or anything specific or you got you got to remember uh, the process going back to before the ice age and the decisions made that we are living through today at the end times of that process uh, were manufactured by people before the Ice Age. And, and we are basically living in a project called the lab, laboratory, and that's why England's politicians are called labor and Tories, laboratories, they manage it, this laboratory, on behalf of the Hindu, the Indians. Indians, contrary to all the bullshit we hear about First Nations and and uh, uh, indigenous people being um, the first people born here, that's bullshit. Indians were born in India and migrated to North America and Europe and other places on behalf of India. 
in the same way as Englishmen came to Ontario on behalf of England, or Frenchmen came to Quebec on behalf of France. But India is the big boss. And it does everything it does in hiding. And people will tell me, well, you know, the Indians, Aboriginals, they're poor. Well, why would they be any different than those in India? They're poor. They're among the poorest people in the world because their bosses steal everything and use it to run the world from behind the scenes. They don't call the state Indiana because they thought they were aboriginals. They call it Indiana because that's the headquarters in North America of Indians. <laughs> and it's right at the Great Lakes. And it's part of the system they've set up to fool people over their lifetime to stick to their job. Stick to one woman, you'll be limited by what you'll learn because women know more than men in their memory than men ever could because they got all kinds of switches that are open that ours aren't. Ours are task oriented, you know, go move the rock, lift the block, and whatever. <laughs> That that requires uh, differences other than what women are. So yeah. once you start to understand that in 8000 BC, at the end of the Ice Age, a laboratory opens. The laboratory has the intent from the beginning to manufacture genetically modified and engineered human beings to a level of uh, seven and a half billion people living at any one time so that all of the tasks that have um, to be included in the mainframe computer as to how you best use this activity, these people, this training to do something or prevent from being done something and in order to get all the answers we need, it will take 10,000 years. So 8,000 years into the making of that group of people was at about the time when they started saying, well, we took our original knowledge out of Africa, we moved it to India, we genetically engineered the people we made so that instead of being black, they would be brown. Then we moved some of them into the Himalayas, and at the top uh, of the Himalayas, we took out all of the ones that didn't work out well in the making, and we used them as military running across the northern part of, of Asia, and we used the smarter ones at the base coming out uh, and populated uh, the uh, southern countries of Asia dropped the color brown down to a color more resembling uh, yellow, closer to the yellow tinge, and we call them Asians. 
And out of that, China became the bigger country, militarily speaking, but India, hidden in the background, had control of all of this activity. And they decided, from what I can understand, that they needed a bunch of people who would be given power over a greater part of the world if people didn't know that it wasn't really them in charge, but that they were taking orders from India. So they started creating religions that eventually turned into politics so that the people who used to be all military and they got older couldn't fight the same way would shift over to be either in politics or in military. And they decided those would be like roosters. So we will call them cock Asians. And the cock Asians had to be invented out of the next stage of genetic engineering that had turned black into brown, brown into yellow, and now you wanted it into pinkish, or, or as they call, compared to the other ones, they're white, but they're not really white, but sure. some of them are white by accident. Uh, and and couldn't do it in Asia without being caught. So they moved that to North America and did it from what the Indians have told me on the Bruce Peninsula in the area of the Great Lakes in a place where they knew that at the end times of this $10,000 span would be 2,000 years later, which is now, and, and that by placing the people that had helped them the most to do their plan in danger of a tsunami, inland tsunami from the Great Lakes, manufactured, of course, by Mother Superior at Lake Superior, because the word superior is linked to the word soup, and what they're talking about is making a soup out of land and water and fish and what have you, going through an area which will then, in fact, uh, kill off all the people once they've served their purpose. And that's where we're at. At 2020, what I just explained to you, will have to become current knowledge. Yeah. yeah. Whether it happens after the soup is made or before the soup is made is the role of whoever their leader has appointed to push a button. You know, Lake Superior uh, is uh, the home of superior propane. Well, propane can cause an explosion. Propane can start an inland tsunami at an explosion. So if you have a, a vertical earthquake, at the Bruce Peninsula extending into the Michigan's northern uh, peninsula, you're going to blow the top off the big fence. And, and what are they talking about in the U.S. government? They're about building a wall. Well, uh, the fence is a wall. And the wall, once it gets an up 
draft from down below, and then a, a water tsunami socking it from above is going to dump everything in a path that has already the pathway designed to kill the people they want to kill where they actually live today. And that includes Indiana. So it's, it's proof that the people who have been most helpful to the people who wanted to control the citizens as slaves who do their own shopping will be the first to be hit. Because the project is over. The 10,000 years is complete. And therefore, get rid of all of the people you've manufactured for a purpose because from now on, the purpose is different. Purpose is not concentrating on the planet for the sake of the planet and the people on the planet. The purpose is to create a space program. And in that space program, you will reinvest life, people who do jobs that are different than the ones they had on Earth. And they're going to have to be doing them in smaller numbers because the number of places they have to investigate is exponentially larger. Instead of one planet, you're going to have to be dealing with millions and billions of pieces of rock out there in the galaxy at first, then in the universe as a whole. So what is the general view of the type of person they need? They need a person who is tall and strong, but able to carry a a baby to term, without having used the help of a male in order to fertilize the sperm. And that is the original persons born on this planet. Same with plants. They are hermaphroditic. They can create life internally of clones of themselves. So men are not needed. So you get the women to hate men to get rid of men. (laughs) Then women are not needed. So you need lesbians and, and other groups of people further down the line there leading to hermaphrodite. They will get rid of women, are in the process of getting rid of women by being we men, women who act like men. And eventually they get around to, okay, all we have on earth under the control of a hidden leadership are hermaphrodites and they're shipping off as they did this weekend with uh, a a empty crude uh, visit to the international station SpaceX SpaceX they're, they're going to send out single hermaphrodite capsules that look very much like uh, um, nuts, reinforced exterior 
can handle heat at entry, all of that stuff. Mm-hmm. And, and it's the same guys doing hey, the autonomous roads, right? The uh, cars. The Tesla. Say that again. Like we were speaking earlier about, you know, Tesla, the autonomous vehicles driving themselves. Yeah. The same company that's doing SpaceX, right? Oh. Yeah. Same thing. And and one spacecraft that's to be sent out to each rock they know of, whether it be uh, a um, twenty mile by ten mile piece of stone, or seven times bigger than Earth, it doesn't matter. You got to send investigators who are going to investigate and must be able to make clones of themselves, basically, um, if they find anything that is considered of value back on Earth. So that uh, a, a larger group of people who can exploit that resource can be planned and sent to that particular place as opposed to the original is a single individual. It takes too long to get to where you're going that there is no time in a lifetime to come back. So you're going in one direction all the time, expanding further and further away from Earth. So what what do they have to do first? Well, getting into orbit around Earth and and then flying off is too expensive and too complex based on the conditions that it has to migrate from that exist on Earth to what exists closer or further from the sun. So what they need is an intermediary place instead of the International Space Station, the best place is the moon. You start off by putting international space stations on the moon with their feet stuck in the ground, but they have the advantage of building a space program without the interference they have of gravity on Earth. There is some gravity, but much less than there is here. So therefore, moving rockets requires much less power and much less buildup than what is uh, needed to get off of this gravity inflicted world so a little nut is all that's required because the person in it will be getting into that capsule at about age six being educated while they are partly sleeping for better part of 14 more years and then they'll be at a rock at the proper age to start work 20 years old and full of knowledge but only about what they're supposed to do don't know anything about you know religion politics military battles, all of that is not there. What they have is a a science degree in in rock picking. So I'm basically being used uh, as a test of what is required for a person to survive in a 
cold environment. That's obviously meaning going further away from the sun than Earth is. And I was obviously manufactured with a genetic engineered personality that um, puts up with things <laughs> that are not comfortable for the purpose of achieving the goal. And on the other end, creation, looking at me, decided that I would be the best one to identify the people who caused the problems in my quote-unquote neighborhood called Canada and, and extend that to the United States because unbeknownst to the United States, they have uh, been controlled from the beginning by... Canadians who were controlled by Brits who were controlled by Hindus. So, any message to uh, you know, the people around the world listening? Like what, some people are asking like what can they really do? Like yes, they know this They've learned this. What like... we've done is is open a switch. By talking this way, we have flipped a main switch in their brain. And if that switch open opening up frees them from the restrictions of their original program and causes them to examine things differently in the future, we have done our job. And they will come forward to help us do our job, which is to prepare for life in paradise for the people who still have a functioning brain. Now, to get into paradise, you discover that it's been loaded down with hypocrites called nuns. And creation is looking outside paradise at the lineup of people waiting to go in and say there are many, many people among these in the lineup that should be in paradise, and there are many, many, many people in paradise that shouldn't be there. So creation's job, while we're doing our job, is to cleanse paradise get the nuns out of there, make room for people who care enough about others uh, as much as they do for themselves rather than saying others are down the line from me and they're not as important as me. Those go into the lineup outside while the ones in the lineup who have an open mind about all these things and care about the bigger picture and creation rather than God, who only cares about war, pestilence, famine, and disease, uh, creation cares about peace and paradise. So we're going to be viewing a magnificent change in the potential for the future 
compared to what we have as a possibility now. Because the people who care will be building a new world, a sixth dimension. And this will be repeated until only the good survive, not only the strong survive. Well, that's definitely something Got I want to be a part of. Yeah. Yeah. Compound, complex, but all makes sense over time. Yep, it feels like the natural way. Yeah. yeah. Millions and billions of people will change sides over time as the switches are popped that allow them to think differently. It's not that they don't prefer that. It's just they don't have access. But we're going to be helping switches to pop. And people's brains will be unscrambled. Yep. And I know, yeah, I know that the penalty for those who have not gone the right way and don't want to go the right way is being prepared in Antarctica. <laughs> and it's being prepared by cutting off big pieces of ice that which will then be subdivided into smaller pieces of ice floating in the Antarctic Ocean across from India and will move into the Pacific Ocean so that the people who are being penalized will be sent out on a floating block of ice and they will arrive in the Pacific Ocean uh, with less than half the ice they had when they took off and eventually no ice left. And they will then sink to the bottom of the ocean and go through the process of being on a plate that goes underneath another plate into the mantle and the core and the shredded and and melted and destroyed to the point where their approach to things will never again be seen. And it takes time, but not the time taken away from those who have functioning brains, it'll be all on their own time when we're gone. What about someone who's cremated and put into the ocean? Is that not the way to go? No, if you're just cremated, there still is a remainder of uh, DNA that that could by some long period of time come together again. I'm told. It's, you know, so it's better Whether you the... put a body in the ground or you cremate it, you're not changing much. But the time might be sooner if it's on the surface. And... Yeah. Does that necessarily if you if you go like if you get separated when you die, you can still come back another way, right? It doesn't have to be that exact wherever your last left off, like on the No, no, it's it's the it's the DNA that's gone. It's your electromagnetism is just a 
system that can turn you on or off. You're always there. You cannot be the nasty person that you were. What, like what about say if you know a relative is just cremated and dumped in the ocean? Like my grandfather was put, we put him in. He wanted to be cremated and, and put into the ocean, right? I have no idea uh, what the problem is with that, if there is one. Uh, but it's not the way that I've been told people are going to be separated. And one part goes to Antarctica, the other part goes to paradise. Okay. Interim is always, you know, the uh, uh, purgatory. You go to trial, you testify against yourself. <laughs> Creation decides what you uh, should pay as a penalty. Waiting in line in purgatory is the most common. It sounds like the DMV. Going through the process of Antarctica uh, is the second most because there are smaller group of nastier people than there are a group of people who just didn't know anything. Right. And paradise will be what it was intended in concept to be at the beginning, and that's a place for good people. Waiting for the additions of more coming from the lineup. And the more we can help the lineup move, the faster the good people get there. In a sense, it's kind of like, you know, we're like Harriet Tubman, <laughs> like freeing the, <laughs> bringing them up north, you know. <laughs> yeah. It was just, it's just, if you really think about it, you know, that we're only here because we were engineered to be here at this time, right? Because it was sped up and whatnot. Yeah. But, but then, you know, we're here as these worker bee slaves in the lab. And then we're basically lab rats that kind of realized they were lab rats and you know, tried to tell the other lab rats... <laughs> <laughs> Get out of the maze, yeah. right? And there's something better on the other side. Yeah, it's kind of quite the task when responsibility. Yeah. But I will say that I, I, like some people that hear this, they get they sink into a depression. But for some reason, this doesn't make me depressed. It never has. Yeah. Neither has it for me, and that's why I was told I had earned the right to be instructed by messengers from creation directly. Because when you go through life, you always keep asking yourself, you know, why, why, why? Why this? Why that? Well, if if somebody can flip a million switches in your body overnight, mm -hmm. concepts that were just concepts become reality. Right. Yep. 
Yeah. So you're on the road, my friend. <laughs> yeah. Glad it's not there as long as it used to process be. That, the process that is closest to us is the cleansing of our neighborhoods. Yeah. Yeah, that's the only... Well, not the only, but that's a pretty rough one, you know, because <laughs> it's, yeah. um, it's right in the backyard, literally, you know, so it's right. So the uh, the day has come. We are in the penultimate year of 10,000. Next year is 2020. Yeah. Now, it can't all happen in one year, and that's why they extend the job up to the the coming of Halley's Comet. And the sign in the sky is the Big Dipper uh, springing a leak. And that's why if you reverse the letter L and K in my name, you end up with leaky. And when you get to be my age, you'll see that one thing occurs. Your um, brain is inserted inside a bag of fluid that will protect it from being banged around just like the spine is protected by a bag around it. And that fluid inside um, that protects you between the bag and and the brain itself, um, as you learn things and your brain is expanding, it pushes some of the fluid out and your nose drips. <laughs> and it's not because you have a cold. Hmm. So you, in fact, become leaky. <laughs> well, I, Terrible do get, thing. I do hope I get to get to your age. Yeah. Hope I make it there. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm trying for uh, being there when time expires. That would mean I have to add another forty years uh, after two thousand fifty eight from two thousand eighteen. It's been done before. Yeah. We we have to find ways to explain ourselves to a whole bunch of intelligent, smart, good people who can't figure it out because their switch hasn't been flipped. And and once it does, they'll catch on pretty fast. Yeah. Would the so show go be- tell your son. <laughs> <laughs> and he'll look at you and not understand for years to come, but don't be surprised. Uh, Unfortunately, much of what I'm saying can only be understood once it's been repeated many times. And repetition is necessary because the way our brain works, 
as I give you the first hint, your brain leaves listening and goes searching in your own lifetime until you all of a sudden realize what you did and you stop thinking and you come back to listening. But in between, you miss the whole section. Yeah. <laughs> so the second time you hear the story, you don't go at the time you went. You wait a little bit longer, and then you go, and you miss the next section. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's how we learn over time is my repeating the story and filling in the blanks later. Yeah. Toothpaste. Yeah. I shall say good night. All right. Mr. My Lee. hands are fine <laughs> enough to go to sleep. <laughs> All right. Talk to you again. Good night. Night. Bye for now.